right, go ahead and start off this lesson by asking a simple question. Show your students three books and ask, if I asked you to stack those books, one on top of the other, could you do it? And uh, they'll obviously say, of course we could. And say, all right, tell me how or show me how. And to get a volunteer to do it, they'll just uh, do exactly what it sounds like, put one book on top of the other, and then they have a stack of books, which is good. Push those aside and then say, okay, since that was so easy, what if I asked you to stack all of these liquids into a cup in just the same way? Could you do it? Some of the kids might say yes, and you could ask them to explain how, and some of the kids might say no, and you'll have to ask them to explain why. And they might say that they're liquids, they're gonna mix together in that cup, there's no way they're gonna stay in separate layers. And then you'll say, well, today you're gonna do it, and you're gonna learn why it works. And the reason why it works is because of density. Density is kind of a hard concept for students to understand, so we're gonna give them a couple of concrete examples. So again, we're gonna to try to give a concrete example of what density means. Now let's just start with the word dense. So here I have a loaf of cinnamon raisin bread that I just bought. And uh, it tastes good, but it's really dense. Have your students give examples of what that might mean. What does it mean when someone says, oh, that loaf of bread is really dense? Some of the things they might say are that it's kind of heavy, which is actually, <laughs> Um, it has a lot of stuff packed in there. It's not light. It's not fluffy. Um, it might be a little bit thick. Uh, and that's usually how you use the word dense. And that's great. It gives them a different context of understanding what density means. So here's another example. Present your students with two cups of water. There is exactly the same amount of water in each cup. In the first cup, cup A, I'm going to add one packet of sugar. I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to let it dissolve so it disperses evenly and then creates a sugar solution. Okay, and remember, that's just one packet of sugar. In the second cup, which again has exactly the same amount of water, I'm gonna add one packet of sugar. Then I'm gonna add two packets of sugar. Then I'm gonna add a third packet of sugar. Again, I'm gonna stir it so it completely dissolves and creates a sugar solution. So, the question to you and your students now is, which solution is more dense? Cup A that has one packet of sugar or cut B that has three packets of sugar. And remember, both of them started with the same amount of water. Think about it. If you said cut B with the three packets of sugar, you're correct. And ask them to explain why. So all throughout this unit, if they're going to make a claim or make a prediction, we want them to give an explanation. And if they can, back it up with any observations or evidence that they've observed in that lesson or in previous lessons. So in this example, ask them, why is this one more dense? And they could say, well, because there's more sugar in there. So what does that mean? There's more mass, there's more matter mixed in there. And if we weighed it, you could ask them this as well. Which cup do you think would weigh more? The one with one packet of sugar or the one where we added three packets of sugar? And that one's pretty simple. It's going to be the one with three packets of sugar. Um, and so you could ask them what they think the relationship is between density and weight. And it's a direct relationship. And so if they're having a hard time wrapping their mind about density, 
they can think about um, what would weigh more. So if something takes up the same amount of space, but it weighs more, it's going to have a higher or greater density. So if it seems like your students have a good handle on density, um, go ahead and let them get started on the lab. The lab sheet has all the instructions on it. Uh, if it seems like they need a little bit more um, help wrapping their minds around the idea of density, you can talk them through a few more examples. You can just show them a cup of honey and a cup of, we'll just take water as an easy example. Both cups have exactly the same amount of honey and water inside. So it's a quarter cup here and a quarter cup there. Ask them just by looking at it, make observations. How does the honey move around the cup? You know, it's really slow. Seems really thick. How does the water move? It moves really quickly. It's not thick at all. It's really thin. If uh, you can ask a students to pick it up and see which one do they think would weigh more if you put them on a scale. The honey does just by feeling it with your hand seem to weigh more, the same amount. And so ask them just by those really simple observations, what liquid do they think is more dense, honey or water? And most of them will say honey, and you could say, well, you could see what happens when you try to build your tower. And you could ask another question and say, what do you think will happen if we pour the honey into the water? Is the honey gonna float on top of the water? Is it gonna mix with the water? Or is it gonna sink to the bottom of the water? Let them make their guesses and give an explanation of why, but most of them are gonna say it's probably gonna sink to the bottom, okay? But again, don't uh, give them the answer, just let them figure it out when they do it. Um, if you need another example, you can take the water out again and the vegetable oil and ask them the question, have they ever heard of the term oil and water don't mix? And ask them what they think that means. Um, literally, in the science world, oil and water actually don't mix. And so ask them what they think will happen if they pour the oil into the water. And they'll probably say, well, they're not gonna mix. <laughs> so ask them and kind of prod them again, what's that going to look like if they don't mix? And eventually you're gonna get that they're gonna stay in separate layers or one's gonna float on top of the other. But don't tell them what it's gonna look like, they'll have to figure it out for themselves. Okay, so once you get through all those examples, they can go ahead and start their lab. On their lab sheet, they have a chart with all the densities listed on them in the wrong order. So what they have to do is figure out how to put them in order and to decide as a group which substance they need to pour into the cup first to make the proper density tower. Okay, here we go. Um, once again, your students are going to have to put the liquids in order from least to greatest density and then kind of discuss amongst themselves which liquid they should pour in first into the tower and why. But um, again, I've ordered it for us already. We'll go ahead and get started. Full disclosure, folks, this is probably the 10th tower that I've tried to build today. <laughs> so um, let this be a lesson to your students that they really do have to pour very slowly. And that does make a difference. So the first substance we're going to pour is honey. And since it's the first one and we don't have to worry about it mixing with anything, we could just kind of plop that in really quickly. The next liquid we're going to pour in is caro syrup. Buy the clear kind, just so the color um, is different from honey. And then also, if the kids want to dye it, they can. I am going to put red food coloring into mine. They definitely want to be really well mixed. Okay, that looks really good. Um, so your students want to make sure that the liquids pour slowly. And this is a technique that I'm using. I'm pouring it onto the back side of the spoon so that slows down the pace of the liquid a little bit. And that way, it's kind of dripping really slowly or drizzling really slowly onto the top surface of the honey and not mixing too much. If it mixes a little, it's okay because it's gonna even itself out. But if it mixes too much, that might be a problem. 
especially when you get to the thinner liquids, and I'll explain when we get there. So it's actually one of the questions in the debrief is, does it actually matter if you put the liquids in the wrong order since they have different densities? Won't they just write themselves? Here we have Dawn. Again, we're going to use that spoon technique. You can see now that we have three distinct layers of different densities. We have the golden honey in the bottom and the red caro syrup in the middle and then the blue dawn at the top. Water. Water, I'm gonna dye green. Again, we're going to use the spoon technique, especially with the water. Definitely want to pour the water in very slowly. Just dribble it. Okay. And again, we can see that we have the golden, then the red, then the blue, then the green. And we have vegetable oil, which has its own color, so we don't have to color it at all. We do want to pour it slowly. You can remind the kids that here's the perfect example of water and oil, or oil and water don't mix. Right there, for you to see. Close. We have the honey, and then the red, and the blue, and then the green. Let's see if we can get better light. The more it settles, or the more it sits, the cleaner the layers are going to be. The last part that you have to add is the rubbing alcohol. And this has probably been my greatest downfall in trying to build these towers. Students have to be really, really careful. When they pour the rubbing alcohol on the top of the vegetable oil, they have to pour it very slowly, probably the slowest of all the liquids. The rubbing alcohol cannot break through the vegetable oil and touch the water layer. Um, you shouldn't tell them why. You can ask them to, to guess why, because it's great for them to make predictions. But what's gonna happen if the rubbing alcohol breaks through the vegetable oil and touches the water is that it's just gonna get stuck in the water layer. And there's a reason for that. And the reason, well, you should actually ask the kids to figure it out, but I'll just uh, let you know there's a lot of water in rubbing alcohol. <laughs> and so if the rubbing alcohol breaks through the vegetable oil and takes too long to make its way back up, the water and the alcohol is just gonna mix with the water layer below and get stuck there. And that kept happening in um, the offices when we were trying it out. So again, remind them, they must pour the rubbing alcohol slowly. I would just spoon it in. Don't even try pouring it on the spoon, like scoop it in spoonful by spoonful. So let's see if I could do it. Here's my alcohol. Let's try it. This again is probably my 10th tower. Boil there. And at this point, they just need to scoop, like spoon it slowly and let it dribble on top. Remember, they cannot let the rubbing alcohol break through the vegetable oil there and touch the water because then it's going to get stuck there. So here's a nice uh, sunny window shot of our density tower. Again, there's the honey, corn syrup, which we dyed red, blue dawn, green water, golden vegetable oil, and the rubbing alcohol, which is kind of the problem child of our density tower family, but there we go. So good luck <laughs> um, and uh, let your kids have fun with it. And if there are mistakes and if there are things that don't go where they're supposed to, don't worry about it, turn it into a learning moment and have the kids try to figure out why it didn't happen the way it was supposed to. Um, that's what happens in real science labs, so it's not a problem if it happens in your classroom.